They didn't have masking tape back in when this car was made 100 years ago. And uh, so I'm, I'm actually striping it sort of in the spirit of, of the original car. Since uh, I'm not gonna mask off the reveals and I have to do this, this area between the reveals uh, to match the moldings. And so, uh, so I'm just actually making my own border with uh, a pinstripe and then I fill it in. Nineteen thirteen underslung. I guess it's the first lowered vehicle. Mm -hmm. the, the brushes I use are camel hair, but that's it's really that's the nickname. It's uh, uh, it's really Russian squirrel tail. So, but it's the same hair on both brushes. They're real soft. a nice sharp edge and what I see is what I get. There's very few of us uh, that make it a uh, living professionally. Uh, let's see, was it 1985 I talked to a gentleman that uh, did a pricing guide for sign painters. This has always been an extension of the sign, hand sign painting business. He did his uh, little guide by surveys. I figured he was a good one to ask how many uh, pinstripers and sign painters there were in the country and, and the best he figured there was 20,000 sign painters one in 50 was a professional pinstriper so that meant that there was about 400 of us in 1985 but my guess is there's less than 200 now there's fewer of us all the time computer vinyls taken over a lot of the hand sign painting consequently there's fewer pinstripers too it's a very rare business, but it's uh, very satisfying. It's goal-oriented. It's neat to see the results, you know. You're getting paid to do a job, but it's, it's just nice to see the results of your efforts. This paint dries fairly quickly enough that I have to, like, move along with it. So uh, I'll get a minimal brush rough. So I just kind of go, go, go back and forth. This is a lettering brush, but it has the same. Let's see, you can see that. It has the same hairs, except the lettering brush has a squared off end and they cut a little shorter. Uh, and they got different numbers on them. Like this is a double O, but this is actually a 20. So, but this is making a wider line, essentially. I'll just go right up to where my pinstripe line is and just fill it in. Just Stroke it smoothly so I won't have any runs. A lot of striping lettering is uh, the, one of the most important things is paint viscosity. You got to have it just not too thick, not too thin. So it's got to be just just right in there, so it'll flow out nice and smooth. I've been an artist all my life. I majored in art in high school and college, but I thought I'd be a commercial artist. But uh, uh, when I got out of college. Uh, got offered a job managing a bicycle shop because at the time I was a bicycle racer on the side. And I got into that for a while. One of my customers worked in a van conversion shop. Unfortunately, he died in a car wreck in 78. The owner of the van shop had seen a little bit of my layout skills and so forth because uh, George had painted around that. So I just uh, helped them out with their unfinished projects and then uh, did some Jeeps and pickups in the shopping center I was, uh, had my bike shop in. Just did it on the side and it, it kind of picked up speed. Pretty much turned into a full-time job after about three years. So my part-time job became my full-time job. The, the neat thing about it was is uh, I always, uh, always liked vehicles and I was an artist so I got to put the two together. It's, it's been kind of a neat ride and all the different vehicles I get to work on. So that was in 78, and I've been doing it ever since. I'm using the modern aid uh, just from a precision standpoint because I want to get a, a gap that I like con that's consistent. So this is just an optical guide. The same thing I do to even if I'm doing a, a stripe in a modern car, I'll, I'll just use this as an optical guide. I won't actually touch the tape, but I'm going to get close to the edge but it just kind of ups the precision a little bit. 
to get the gap more consistent. But the tape uh, is very temporary, of course. Neat thing about this paint is it, it mixes so well. And so this is a mixture to try to approximate the interior and the underslung. Uh, mixed uh, bright red, brown, purple, and, and uh, gray together. Try to get that interior color. So paint viscosity is everything, so I got to get, get it to where it's just uh, the right texture here. Over a 17 year period, I did 2,000 BMW cars for a local dealer, but it's hard to get the dealers to spend any money. Uh, that was kind of uh, um, an unusual thing to get to do a lot of dealer work. I did a Peterbilt truck. It was the last 359. Uh, Peterbilt trucks uh, usually they don't change models too often and that particular one had a long life and it was the last one that was made in the Nashville factory. That model Peterbilt was made from 1949 to 1986 and it was the very last one and, and I got to stripe and letter it so that was pretty neat. A locomobile that won Pebble Beach a few years ago and uh, a 40 uh, Ford pickup that got in the grade eight of the Riddler. So, you know, I've got, been fortunate to work on some pretty neat stuff. Thomas Flyer's one of them. <laughs> and that's just right here. I did that one in, in 08. Yeah, the custom cars, uh, the individuals. Uh, I've always done a lot of body shop repairs. I'm one of the few people that can repair the factory lines if they're painted. Usually there's uh, one 18-wheeler in the, uh, the tractor, 18-wheeler tractor, and I do about one, or, one of those every two, week or two. Don't do as many motorcycles. Uh, the economy kind of trimmed back the motorcycle stuff a little bit. It's so varied, and it changes. It's a roller coaster. It goes up and down. So surprising number of antique cars out there. Seems like it might be in other places, but it's like Tennessee's favorite antique car is a Model A. So there's Model A's everywhere. I'd never heard of an underslung before I started working on this, which isn't surprising. A lot of these old cars, uh, they're not super common, so. Um, but uh, what struck me about some of this was the suspension how similar that is to the way people lower pickups nowadays with lowering blocks and the, the spring underneath the rear end and the extended shackle. Uh, I imagine it was pretty impressive in its day to have a car that was sitting lower to the ground than your typical sedan was. I have to make this little corner. I'll, I'll actually clean it up a little bit in a minute. See what this tape does is give me the spacing I would like to have without, I can concentrate on my line without having to concentrate on the, the distance. In the greater scheme of things, it looks really just right, you know. One thing's for sure about this particular car is it's, it's got more striping on it than any antique I've ever done. That's by far in a way, it's got stripes all over it. But. That's okay. But uh, yeah, this kind of reflects the time. I'm sure they had plenty of time for uh, craftsmanship and so forth back then. More so than nowadays. Rolls Royce is one of the for few foreign cars that have, have had uh, hand painted stripes over the years. But for the most part, pinstriping is uh, uniquely an American uh, phenomenon, I guess. Early in my career, I went over to uh, Midtown next to Harriman and to see Pop Rice. He was uh, kind of a legend in the antique car restorations back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. He actually restored one of the Nybergs, I think, Chattanooga car. Uh, but uh, Pop told me yeah, that uh, in the 20s and 30s, mostly the 30s, he, he was a pinstriper for Ford Motor Company. And uh, he told me that they had, uh, most of the time they had seven stripers. And uh, four of them were there all the time. Uh, three of them would uh, 
be a revolving door. Either they would uh, uh, show, uh, show up for work a little bit sauced or something, <laughs> a little too much of the bottle, or they would show up late or something, and Henry would get upset with them and let them go. But there were so few stripers, he needed pinstripers, so he kind of kind of let them back in. So you had four guys that were there all the time and three that were kind of the revolving door. And some of that's the, uh, uh, the cliche of the drunk sign painter, I guess. I, I've come up against that myself. Once I was, went over West Knoxville to do a guy's uh, 28 Chevrolet and he went so far as to uh, warn his daughter, said, I've, I've heard this guy's good or something. I don't know what he looks like, but, uh, you know, don't be too surprised, you know. Tattoos, long hair and everything. So I show up more or less like this and he's, he's dragging his jaw up off the ground, you know. Because <laughs> so, I didn't fit his stereotype. The father of custom pinstriping that most people know about was um, Ken Howard. His uh, artist name was Von Dutch was in California in the early 50s. He came up with symmetry pinstriping designs. And uh, all of us uh, owe a debt of gratitude to him just for getting, getting the craft started. Because before then, pinstriping was pretty much borders or edges. Like on fire trucks, you might have a little bit of corner designs, but nobody really had any custom work. Never thought of pinstriping in custom terms. The Von Dutch changed all that. And he, it's like a lot of art things, uh, he stumbled onto it. He was working in a body shop, and uh, the owner of the shop is like a 50 Mercury, something like that. He said, uh, we're not gonna paint the hood of this car, just do something on it, kind of like dress it up a little bit. First thing Von Dutch did, it was off center on the very front of the hood of that Mercury and uh, filled in like with white paint. Um, and uh, the scratches. And he got to looking at it and it, since it was off center, he just decided to make the uh, matching design on the other side and then he started connecting it up like, um, like a puzzle. And he pretty much uh, invented an art form, symmetry pinstriping that you see on hot rods and stuff. It takes me about seven hours to stripe and letter. Of course, lettering, I'm a, uh, I'm a pinstriper that does lettering as opposed to a sign painter that does striping. It sounds kind of funny, but usually your desire and drive is a little more towards one or the other. I enjoy striping more, but it, uh, it's a means to an end. In order to get to do the big trucks, I have to do lettering, so. But I apply myself to that, and, and there's very few hand sign painters anymore. I've got a, a following for that, um, the ones that don't like decals. Uh, the best comment I got from one of my customers was, when you put a tape stripe on something, you have a picture of a pinstripe. It's not a real, it's something you're sticking on the vehicle instead of it. But when you paint something on, it actually is the vehicle. It actually becomes the vehicle. It's paint, you know, so it's not something you just stick on it. But it would be just a crying shame to put uh, tape on something like this. Tape wasn't even invented till 1950. So to put tape, even to put it on a Model A is just awful. Just leave it off. Don't put tape stripes on a Model A, you know. Most people assume what does in pinstripers is their eyes or their nerves, but actually it's their back because we're bent over in so many odd angles and most of my peers, what makes them give it up is their back gives out.
so I'm gonna straighten up some of it, but this will, uh, and I gotta straighten my little corners up and make them sharper. But essentially, here's the, here's the what you'll see. cars here at Honest Charlie Garage for, for many years and, and we call upon Howard to, to help us out in, in our striping work and these brass era cars get a lot of stripes. You know my, my specialty before coming here to Chattanooga was a lot of 30s and, and uh, 20s era cars and, and they have stripe work. They have usually one along the belt and one you know maybe some around the reveals and whatnot but I've never seen so many stripes on a car as what this thing this American has. Howard has come down here for several days uh, from Knoxville to do this project and and uh, you know usually a striper gets the shaft they get the project right before it has to load up on a trailer like midnight oil kind of stuff but that couldn't be the case on this because it's so labor intensive. So it's been fun having him around to see this skill uh, see this art that that uh, that he can share with us uh, with, of striping by hand you know he doesn't use tape um, you know, tape can be used uh, as long as it's not abused. Uh, but in the advent of vinyl tape and, and vinyl artwork, hand lettering and striping is, is starting, that skill's diminishing. But Howard is, is keeping it alive. Uh, he's sharing it with us. And I tell you, I'm just tickled to death, Howard, with, with the results here. Uh, you made a, a comment, it might have been uh, just a joke, but you said you'd never spent so much time on a car. Is that true? Well, it's true, yes. On, uh, on an automobile, I've, I've spent a lot of time on 18-wheelers, and of course there's a lot of surface area on them. Yeah, but, that's uh, right. Um, but this, uh, this uh, was quite a, quite a task <laughs> uh, with all the, it's almost like doubled up uh, outlines with all the reveals and everything. So they, uh, it must have been a pretty stunning car when people first saw it. That's right. In, in this, day, yeah. this color is kind of a drab color, but your black contrast and red stripes amazing. Customer loves it. And I'm sure all your customers are thrilled the way we are. So if you're a potential customer, mm -hmm. look for Howard Horn on his website. You'll see a lot of his past projects and his abilities. Check them out. Thank you well, so much you. For, for helping us. Thank I appreciate you. it.